Kellyanne, this is truly a terrible day, and um, the 10 ton gorilla in the room is the president, I'm afraid, and you are his senior counselor. And many, many people are asking whether now all these words that he's used, all these phrases that he's used, will he follow up on what he urged the country today to put aside racial hatred, white supremacy, and just stop all this hatred? Will, will, will he do that now? Well, Christian, he already did it, and you've given a platform on your network to the last 24 to 36 hours to people who would like to be the president and are out there using some really hateful language to get kicks and clicks and ratings. But today we saw the president take to the podium and speak directly to the people of this country and indeed all around the world, condemning unequivocally in no uncertain terms white supremacy, bigotry, racism. I have to gently uh, but firmly disagree with your characterization of the president and remind you that he is today he showed equal parts grief, shock, anger, condolences, resolve, and action. We saw just in the last hour or so that Senator Lindsey Graham, chairman of the Judiciary Committee, and Dick Blumenthal, D Democrat of Connecticut, come together to have this bipartisan red flag law. That is something the president supports, mentioned today. I think the president is also asking us all to come together, not just to unify, but to, to unite in resolve so that we can fix any combination of factors. Mm -hmm. No one solution because there's no one contributing factor. And so he did mention other possible causes. He, won, he denounced these murderers as monsters and evil and hate-filled manifestos. And he called white supremacy in the, in the manifesto, uh, quote, sinister ideology. So he was very unequivocal. And I would also say the president did not respond in kind to those who have shamelessly and baselessly attacked him personally all weekend long. He's trying to find solutions without politicizing them. Okay, so l let's just take a couple of those then. Unfortunately, he did attack the press again, saying that fake news is spreading the hatred and division in this country after these killings. But uh, let, me, let me just please go back to his own words. We listed a whole load of them at the beginning in our introduction to you. And here is just in the last few months, he at a rally in Florida um, using some of these same words. This is an invasion. When you see these caravans starting out with 20,000 people, that's an invasion. I was badly criticized for using the word invasion. It's an invasion. And it's also an invasion of drugs coming in from Mexico, OK? It's an invasion of drugs. They all better be careful. But how do you stop these people? You can't. There's no. That's only in the panhandle you can get away with that statement. Well, of, you know this very well, and you know he was reacting to somebody in the crowd saying, shoot them. I mean, look, this is language that very, very few people are used to um, around a president, and it seems to have become the norm since 2016. So I just want to ask you again, the president used the word invasion, and the gunman said his attack was a response to the Hispanic invasion of Texas. Um, Kellyanne, you're his senior counselor. You are really close to him. Do you countenance those words that the president uses? Do you try to tell him not to use words like invasion, like infestation, like all the words that he uses which are associated with hate speech? Uh, Christian, I not so long ago you had the former FBI director, Jim Comey, on your show, and controversially you asked him, does he regret not having regulated, I guess, or, or uh, prosecuted as hate speech, quote, lock her up. So uh, what we saw this week, and I think he even pushed back on that, uh, what we saw this week is real hate and real evil and real bigotry and real white supremacists and real murder. And that monster ought to be brought to justice through the death penalty, in my view. And I'm glad that those in Texas who are in charge of such things have called this domestic terrorism and indeed can pursue the death penalty. Mm -hmm. I'd like to know if the 2020 crowd, who's preening and screaming all over your network and, and elsewhere, is going to look America in the eye and somehow tell us that the death penalty should not be considered for this monster. Mm -hmm. Most of what I tell the president is private, but I, will, but I will tell you this. I'm very happy that he, as the president, 
uh, of all of us as the president of this entire nation and a leader in this world, denounced in no uncertain terms unequivocally hate, racism, and white supremacy. And I would also like to point something out. The day before Bob Mueller testified on July 24th, the day before FBI Director Chris Wray testified up in Congress, they got very little coverage, including on your network, because everybody was guessing what Bob Mueller would and would not do. Silly. What actually happened is Chris Wray's testimony, or FBI Director, he said that the most, most domestic terrorism arrests this year involve white supremacy, that Donald Trump's, this president's FBI has uh, been very, very accelerated and intensified in its investigations and arrests of hate crimes, domestic terrorism, including, not exclusively, but including white supremacy. There are other forms, as you know. Okay. And so this is an administration that's been very active all along. It got very little coverage, if any, because Bob Mueller was going to testify the next day. But the director of the FBI told us two short weeks ago about this and all the efforts. I was briefed by them yesterday. There is a ton going on already. All right, well, let me ask you this then. Uh, I understand. I'm, I'm honestly trying to have... Death penalty? You're... Well, but you're... But you're I, I'm your trying to have... Today. Uh, no, I am trying to penalty? have I a grown-up conversation with you, and the death penalty and is and an I'm issue down you. the road, which the president has already associated himself with. We've already had the attorney general, the Justice Department, talking about reinstating the federal death penalty. That's done. Let's move on. For cases like I the, want, I for want monsters to, like the like the, for the monsters. evil person right. in in well like, monsters, like the evil person in El Paso. Well, that's just come up. Innocent people. But yes. but President Trump has called it a hate crime, which it is, and domestic terrorism, which it is. But it is. but the U.S. Department of Homeland Security, in a sponsor study, found that there are major gaps in national terrorism prevention efforts. There is no federal charge for domestic terrorism. There is no coherent strategy, Kellyanne. Will this change? And more to the point also, we act as if politics is not, not relevant here, and we act... Well, I'm, I'm just surprised that no mention was made of guns, but we can talk about that in a second. But could you please tell me whether you think now that there can be a coherent Department of Homeland Security, FBI, all those organizations. As I said, there is no federal charge for domestic terrorism. Uh, I do, and mainly because of the efforts that the, our FBI and DOJ under this president's watch have been investing in, as goes domestic terrorism. You know, Christiane, you know 9-11 very well. We all do. We all live through that tragedy together. And the response to that was, was a lot more of international terrorism. And it's been migrating toward domestic terrorism for a while now. And in fact, our FBI is on the front lines of combating both types of terror. You'll remember after 9-11, it was to see something say something that was predominantly about packages. But it's also just, we're all, we should all do our best that if you, if you think somebody is is threatening or is menacing the public. I mean, you read, I saw that it was publicly released. I'd read it earlier, but it's now in the public domain that the shooter in Dayton in high school, he had two lists, a rape list and a kill list. That was years ago. Nobody has come forth to ever say that this person or law enforcement could not know that in his background check. It's It's been reported that he procured the firearms legally because his background check had some traffic stop or moving violation, but not the fact that in high school he had a kill list and a rape list because of HIPAA. We should look at HIPAA also. I, I want to I ask you a question. And that the president's right when he talks about the drugs coming over the southern border. Okay. The drugs are killing our communities. Well, you played the clip. Let me respond to it. I work on that here in the White House. And we have the, we have the first drop in overdose deaths at 5.1% last year because of the efforts, the whole government approach, bipartisan efforts we're making. The drugs coming over the border that we had enough fentanyl interdicted at the ports of entry to kill every man, woman, and child in this country three times plus over. And between the ports of entry, another batch of fentanyl all told last okay, calendar, Kelly last fiscal year to kill 90 million people. I know you don't want to talk no, about No, no, it's not that I don't want to talk about, about it. Security. This is entirely your and issue, and I understand. And we have had a whole interview on this. Kellyanne, Kellyanne, we're not talking you, about border security right now. We're talking about play the clip about U.S. And the border. Domestic terrorism, white nationalism. You played the clip. Yeah, now I've also played the president's words, yes. and white I want to know. White nationalism. The president no. denounced today domestic terrorism. Fine. He's denouncing his U.S. attorney, his the, the law enforcement in Texas has already designated this 
domestic terror. That means the president's Fine. federal government and state government agree. It is domestic terrorism. Okay. We want now the, the words, penalty. Kellyanne. Kellyanne, Kellyanne. Now the words, because most people who study this, including FBI, including the experts on this, not the chattering classes, not the armchair, you know, observers, but the experts say that there are climates of hate that are created and usually from the top. So I'm asking you, will you and the president's advisors seek to restrict his Twitter use and his other use of these, no, of these words, of these words, what he said about Elijah Cummings, what he said about Baltimore, what he says about but migrants. Christian, Yes or no, it's simple, no, because if I'm it's no, it no, stays it's there at the top. Here's why. No, I'm not telling you what I discussed with the president. No.